This episode is brought to you by Columbia. My bags are packed and I'm ready to fly. This time I'm headed for Europe to explore the beautiful and mysterious city of Prague. So the flight to Prague is going to take about 16 hours, so we're going to have to settle in for a good rest. But we're going to be uh, transferring off in Zurich, so we get a good chance to see that as well. Sitting on long flights can often cause your feet to swell, so don't forget to slip into a pair of slippers. So the moment we get to Prague, it's going to be a lot of walking, so get as much rest as you can. See you there. While I'm in the air, here's some background on the city. Prague is the capital and largest city of the Czech Republic. Situated in the northwest of the country on the Vltava River, the city is home to around 1.3 million people. With an abundance of unique architecture preserved for centuries, this is a must-visit place for travel addicts. Having booked a rental car online back in Shanghai, I was off to a smooth start. So it takes around half an hour to get to uh, central Prague from the airport, which is a bit of a treat because sometimes when you go to some cities, you're in for a long drive. But this time, it's a nice quick one. So the roads here in Prague are not as um, straight and flat as you would expect, so keep your wits about you. They're pretty good, but make sure that you uh, keep your eyes on the roads. The trams, they are also uh, on a fixed path, so you have to give way to them because they will not give way to you. I'd suggest, if in doubt, let them go. So it's easy to rent a car if uh, you've got a license to drive around Europe and uh, you pick the car up, but make sure before you get on the road to plan your trip ahead because parking is very difficult. So if you think ahead, get the right route, then you won't have to walk a long way to find a park. But of course, when you get in the center of Prague, most of the locations are very close together. So park the car, take it by foot. To start things off, I decided to take the Royal Route. This magnificent landmark and historic core of Prague is the Prague Castle, which has gazed down on the River Vltava for more than 1,100 years. The buildings that make up the castle represent virtually every architectural style of the last millennium. One of the most integral structures is the Gothic St. Vitus Cathedral. So the Cathedral of St. Vitus was founded in 1300s, right. but the beginning of the 15th century, the building of this cathedral stopped. It stopped, then it was, it stopped in 1420, oh. and then it stayed unfinished for a long time. This original part then closed with a wall, and there was nothing outside, but then they decided to finish the cathedral in 1800s. In 1850s, right. they called three architects, they made new plans, so that part was built newly in the turn of the 19th and the 20th century. Oh. It was finished about 500 years later. 500 yeah, years later? Yeah. Wow. There's a long break between the original part and new part. This cathedral is a perfect example of Gothic architecture and is of course the largest and most important church in the country. This was also the place where kings and queens were coronated. It is also a place of entombment for patron saints, sovereigns, noblemen and kings. Well, and inside the cathedral also Czech kings were buried, right here in this royal tomb. Oh, right here? It's made of white marble. Inside there are three persons buried, members of the family of Habsburgs, family ruling this country till 1900s. And we can see those lying statues of these people who were buried here in 1500s. Compared to the grandeur of the cathedral, the palace hall is much more subtle, but its history is anything but that. 
So this is the royal palace, the original residence of kings with a big ceremonial hall. Ah, oh, so this is the ceremonial hall. So yes. what used to occur in... Yeah. Originally, in the 16th century, ceremonial night tournaments, games with jousting on horses. Oh, in, here. in here inside, they put straw on, and straw. there's still a ceremonial staircase for horses here. Yes. Also, coronation banquets, right. and are now used for inaugurations of new presidents. So it is still in use, this big hall. The whole there were ceremonial tournaments and special steps for horses. This is where the, uh, yeah. the horses would come up. Yes, they were coming. The yeah, there's a special brick floor which is still original here. Wow. So, so steps for horses to for get in for just jousting. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yes. <laughs> And one thing you cannot miss here is a display of the Czech crown jewels, which can be found through the southern gardens. So these are the crown jewels? Yes, they are. Crown jewels of Czech kings. And they're kept here? Yes, they kept, but these are only replicas here. So where are the original ones? Original crown jewels are kept permanently in St. Vitus Cathedral in special safe rooms. There are seven locks with seven different keys, so yeah. well kept can be seen only once in five years. Once every five years? Yes, a tradition. Dating back to the 9th century, the castle has been a seat of power for kings of Bohemia, Holy Roman Empires, and is now the official residence and office of the President of the Czech Republic. Every ruler has made their own addition to the castle, hence the amazing mixture of styles. So you're going to need at least half a day if you want to see it all. A changing of the guard ceremony takes place every hour at the front gates. And if you're lucky to be there at noon, the ceremony includes a fanfare and a banner exchange. After an in-depth tour within the castle, it was time to see what life was like for those living in the area around it. But with so much history embedded in these buildings, I needed a secret weapon. Meet Jana. As a history teacher and a part-time tour guide, she has the uncanny ability to tell the story behind pretty much every building in the city, no matter how small or large. So yes, you can see this house, a baroque house, the house at St. Luke. Supposedly he was the first one who painted the picture of Madonna and the child. So oh, you can yes. see him on the facade. And also look at the windows. You can see four windows and these are not real windows, they are painted windows. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. One, yeah. Two, three, four, right. Just to keep the symmetry of the windows. A true yeah. artist. The castle district is packed with many grand mansions with Baroque and Renaissance facades, which were once the homes of Prague's most influential families. But what makes these properties truly royal would have to be the view. This way, if you look down, now you can see really most of the historic center of Prague, just yeah. down there. Wow. If you look here, you can see red roofs only. That is the original style, and it has to stay this way. Some of the oh, roofs are even new, but yes, it's a regulation, so they have to maintain, you know, the same style, same color, same material. Yeah. Of course, we can see more. We can see the river down there, and then the other side of the river, and even out there, some of the uh, high rises, you know, Prague today has 22 administrative districts. Yeah. So here we are in Prague 1 in the first district. Oh, but this is Prague 1. Prague 1, the historic this center. This is the number one, the top. Number one, the most yeah. interesting, most beautiful <laughs> part of the city. So a 3D map of Prague. Yes. In Prague, there's no need to look for tourist destinations. Any part of this city is an attraction in itself. So I love how these um, are all different colours, right? Yes, colours, you know, houses have uh, different colours, but also what is interesting here in the street, the house signs, you know, almost each house has yep. a name, has a symbol. So for example, here you can see the house at the green crayfish. 
Look, oh, right, know, so that's not a uh, place that sells seafood or something? No, like no, no, <laughs> no, no, not today. Well, why do they have those? Uh, you know, they had because houses were not numbered for a long time until oh. the 18th century. Houses didn't have numbers. Oh, really? But houses had names, you know, and had various symbols, pictures, reliefs, you know, right. on their facade. So, so we the here we have crayfish, here we have the red lion, oh, yep. for example. You know, and there are many in this street, this street particularly, Nerudova Street, is very famous famous for many of those house yeah. signs still well preserved. Right, so on the postcard when you send a, uh, a letter you have to draw a crayfish. <laughs> if you're a bad artist, you would go to that, another that house. Would be, that would be a little bit difficult. That's why they introduced numbers yeah. in the 18th century. <laughs> My first day here has made me realise that Prague is truly one of the ultimate European cities to explore. And this is just the beginning. The next day, I set off to battle. That's right, believe it or not, I'm going to compete with a local chef to see who can make a better Czech dish. So now we are here for the Royal Czech Challenge, is to see if I can make a traditional Czech dish. Well, it's actually not a dish, it's a paste. It's called beer cheese. Is this a very Czech thing? Yes. Very Czech. Let's start. Yes, let's put on the camera. Let's do it. What is the flavor that we're going for? So we're looking for a, a heavy flavor. Mine be for everyone, but I think this dish that I'm going to make is going to be just perfect. So we make it nice and soft, like, like mashed potato. No, <laughs> A bit of beer, oh great. Oh, butter, everything needs butter. So two big, huge scoops of butter. So we use yours. Despite the challenge ahead, the atmosphere in the kitchen seemed surprisingly calm. So now for the unexpected challenge, we have our two completed dishes on the table and we have some cooks that are here to uh, taste test. We haven't told them which one is which. Please. You nervous? You okay? You know? Mm. For the flavor. <laughs> he liked my dish! You know why? Because I was stirring it non-stop. I was like going, whoa, 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 Thank you very much. Oh, I shouldn't celebrate too early. Yes, I do. All right, so uh, when do I start work? Just to be done. So we're going to talk about wages first, of course, yeah? With a new job in the kitchen waiting for me next week, I still had time to explore the city. So I head to the Old Town Square to meet up with Jana. Entering into the Old Town Square is like turning the clock back to over 600 years ago. With its ancient buildings and magnificent churches, this is one of the most beautiful historical sites in Europe. To fully appreciate the beauty of the Old Town Square, you can climb up the Old Town Hall Tower for a stunning view over the entire square. Wow, 
so this is the view. What a view, right? We yeah. are here on top of the, the old town hall tower. And of course you have the whole city just down there, just yeah. in front of you. And to, particularly from here, you can see the church here quite well. So this is the Church of the Virgin Mary right. from the 14th, 15th centuries. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is really a, one of the landmarks here uh, in the old town. So if you get lost in the labyrinth of those uh, narrow streets here in Prague, look for the spires of this church, you know, oh. and this way you will find your way back to the old town square. Dated back to the 12th century, the Old Town Square started as the central marketplace for Prague. Over the centuries, buildings of various architecture styles were built around the market, each bringing with them stories of wealthy merchants and royal figures. Another landmark of Prague is the astronomical clock. Every hour, hundreds of tourists from all over the world gather in front of the Old Town Hall to enjoy a fascinating mechanical performance, which in the Middle Ages was considered one of the wonders of the world. Mesmerized by this timely show, I managed to lose my guide. What? This is a whole new world under here, guys. Where is this place? Unguided, I found myself under the tower in what appeared to be a gloomy cellar. Who's that? You can take a left if you like. Left? Yes. All right. This way. This is a maze, guys. These are underground cells from the 12th and 13th centuries. Oh, right. Oh my gosh, this place is huge. Hold on, take a look down. This used to be a dungeon for Right. Ah, this is looking more like civilization. Hi, Cameron. Huh? Uh, Jana? Oh, this used to be the first floor of an original house. Hmm. Cozy. Hi, Cameron. Oh, there you are. So, you know, this is actually the reason why we came down here, because I wanted to show you this. Today, actually, is the eve of uh, St. Nicholas Day. Bishop Nicholas, he is accompanied by an angel and also by a devil, and sometimes even more devil. So he brings gifts to children, good children. But there is always a devil there in, in the background because not all the kids, they behave. The devil is there just, you know, with his wow. finger like that, just to... Just to keep tabs just, on them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My mission? To remind kids that being naughty has its consequences. Here, St. Nicholas Day is like Christmas and Halloween rolled into one. The costume worked like a charm on some, and left others simply wondering why. It's good, right? If you come to Prague during the festive season, this is an event not to miss. At night, people of all ages dress up as good or evil and gather in the Old Town Square for a night of pranks and laughter. Also, the holiday markets are in full swing at the Old Town Square. 
Don't forget to check out the market stalls for some hot local treats to keep you warm. So, so what is this? Kind of donuts, sweet donuts. Yeah? Is it traditional in Prague? It's traditional Czech. Oh, right. So, so what are the ingredients? Oh, it's eggs, and milk, flour, sugar, nuts. That's it? And cinnamon. Oh, right. This is the perfect thing to eat when you're cold in the winter because not only the cinnamon you know, gives you that nice warm feel, but you get to warm your hands up. It's kind of like a cup in itself. How much? 60. 60, all right. Look at that, I'm already feeling warm. Thank you very much. This is gonna keep me a companion for a while. Look at that. You can wrap your hands around it. Look at the steam coming out. Oh, it feels awesome. All right, let's see how it goes. Mmm. The sweetness gives you that beautiful flavor in the mouth, but what I love is how it's gonna keep warm for a while. This will keep me going all night. Let's go. A whiff of seasoned meat stopped me right in my tracks. Hello, Shanghai.